All right, let's talk some Jared Goff. Listen, uh, Jared Goff is not a perfect quarterback. He is not the long-term solution or even the short-term solution for the Detroit Lions. It's also not his fault that this Lions offense has been horrible. And I think that he's getting scapegoated a lot. The reality is you put Matt Stafford back on this team, they're still going to really struggle. Like this isn't a good offense. Regardless, if, if Mahomes is there, I don't know how much uh, yards this team is going to rack up. I don't know how many points this team is going to rack up. It's a tough offense. And I wanted to kind of just real quick before we get into the film, talk about the 10 drives that Detroit had and kind of how, uh, you know, a lot of these were not Goff's fault, and he was getting put in tough situations. Drive one, there was a rush for three yards, then there was a penalty, and then there was a rush for just one yard. You now have a third down and long that's basically impossible for Goff to uh, you know, convert on. Drive two, you have a rush for no gain, then you had a screen pass for no gain, and then nothing's open down the field to get the first down, so Goff takes a seven-yard completion, now it's fourth down. The drive after, there was a holding penalty followed up by a good throw by Goff that led to an interception. That's not Goff's fault. Uh, that's, you know, an unfortunate break. So three drives, already nothing he could have done. Now, the fourth drive of the game, legitimately, there is some criticism to put on Goff. He missed the throw on third down, and then on fourth down, he threw the ball away, which was stupid. We'll get into that in the film, but uh, that's definitely like, okay, that one was on Goff. So again, I'm not saying there's no blame to put on him. But, you know, then we keep going. Uh, drive five, there was a rush for one yard. Goff made a correct read on a play that resulted in them losing two yards. Now you have a third down and long. Uh, the next drive was this, this drive six. This was the drive where I put the second most amount of blame on him. And what happened was there was an incomplete pass uh, on the first down that could have maybe worked. So that's why I'm like, okay, well, you deserve some blame there. Even though literally the next play was a rush for minus five yards. So back to a third down and long, although at least this time there was, it was in some part because of him. Uh, the next drive, uh, he runs the offense well to set up a third down and one, does the right play each time, but then on third down, they rush for no gain. They were going to go for it on fourth and one, but then there was a penalty, so they couldn't. Um, the next play, there was a screen pass, uh, there was a dropped pass, and then the receiver fell on third down, so now you don't get it. Uh, the, you know, drive nine now, uh, you, they ran the ball for minus two yards, and then all that was open was a check down for three yards, so again, third down and long. Drive 10, they got the touchdown. So, again, these aren't, like, every single drive. These are just, you know, for example, if they got, like, a 10-yard pass and then they didn't, uh, and then they had three more plays where they didn't get the first, I excluded the 10-yard pass. But that's basically how all of these plays, out of all these drives, how they all stall. One thing I talk a lot about is how, uh, you know, a running game, you can win without a great running game, but... If you're going to do that, you have to abandon the run. I mean, DeAndre Swift had 1.8 yards per carry, and he had 13 carries. So you had 17 carries in this game, and they were getting no yards basically at all uh, on this, you know, 35 yards on 17 carries. You're getting two yards of play. That's just not going to get it done. So why are you still running the ball so much? Why do you still run these screen passes that aren't getting any yards? Let's get into the film and talk about it. All right, so let's start things off with this play. This is going to end up being uh, his, I would say this is his best throw of the game. It's also going to be the an, inter an interception. So kind of goes to show the kind of game that uh, happened for the Lions. It's going to be, so it's zone coverage. You see the route that could get into a gap in coverage, kind of, you know, past the linebackers, but, you know, underneath the safeties. It's a play that can work, but probably won't be wide open. And look at how, right, when this play starts. So you see that there's not a huge window. There are two safeties who could come in and help make the play. On top of this, there is a linebacker who's, you know, keeping pace, but also worth mentioning as a linebacker, you have to turn your back meaning that uh, you can't see the ball. So it's it's a good decision to make this throw, but again, it's not wide open. And Goff, while getting hit, just makes a completely accurate laser that somehow goes out of his receiver's hands and into uh, a Cincinnati Bengals' hands. I mean, that's a tough one for Goff, obviously. You know, that's just, I mean, that's you got to make that play. You got to make that catch because that's a really good throw by your quarterback. So uh, this is, it's one example, but it's, you know, building a narrative of kind of what's to come um, well, with or what happened with the Lions. And you know what? Let's just go to some of the negatives of Goff. Because, like, I want to be very clear in this. I'm going to come off like a very strong Jared Goff defender. Uh, 
I, 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 Jared Goff made some dumb decisions in this one and made some bad plays. Like, you know, I talked about the one drive that I felt like was really on him. This was that drive where this is going to be third down right here. It's a pick play that, you know, it can work and watch what happens. So look, Goff takes the snap and TJ Hawkinson on this play, who was lined up as a halfback, he's looking to get open. So this play, you know, you have to hit this. However, Goff's throw, it's just a bit behind Hawkinson. And maybe that was a communication thing. I don't think so. I think Goff just missed it a little bit uh, and threw it behind Hawkinson, which is, it wasn't horribly missed, but it was missed. And that's a big play because you get that. Now you convert to third down. You now have the ball inside the 30. You're in field goal range, all of that stuff. Uh, instead, what the Lions said is, hey, we're in position where, you know, let's go for it, which is a call that I like. So now this is the fourth down play. This is the one that he got the most criticism for, and he deserved it. Uh, it's going to be, so here's how this play works. It's zone coverage, and basically what you want to do is you want to make your reads inside out right here. So the first read will be Hawkinson, who's running the furthest underneath, and then you kind of keep going. And this is part of why this play isn't going to work, is, you know, nothing here is going to get open. So look at how, how when Goff takes the snap, you know, he's reading this play the way he's supposed to. He looks at his three, uh, you know, deeper routes, and none of those are open. So to me, this is part of why, you know, you're ripping your hair out if you're a Lions fan watching this on TV, because on TV, you can see the check down routes uh, appear to be wide open. Now, will they get the first down? Probably, but not definitely. But also, you can kind of understand why Goff uh, is a little bit late getting here. I mean, you know, his first reads on these, this play were not open. So like, I would say that, you know, Tom Brady looks at this and says, okay, I'm going to take the check down immediately. Jared Goff is basically the complete opposite of Tom Brady. He's never been good at the post-snap stuff. You knew this when you traded for him. He was not going to be great at the post-snap stuff. So to be clear, big flaw on Goff. Kind of understandable. Like what I would say is, hey, for the Lions, like your play didn't work, right? Like Goff just didn't recognize that in time. Like that's that's what happened. That's the criticism of Goff is that he didn't realize that your play back backfired. However, then Goff is going to scramble outside the pocket, which creates a hold. And then he just throws the ball away, which is just a baffling decision on fourth down. My guess is what happened is because he saw the holding penalty, he said, okay, well, we're not getting it anyway, so whatever, I'm just going to throw it away, uh, which is not what you're supposed to do. That's horrible uh, situational awareness. Now, like on a first down, if you see a holding penalty, you probably should throw it away because, you know, if you don't want to take a chance, because then that could be an interception, which then means that, uh, you know, they'll decline the penalty. So just throw it away makes sense. But here, even if you got the first down, the holding penalty would have negated it, meaning that uh, you, you know, don't get the first down, but you could still at least punt it. So just a baffling decision from Jared Goff. Now, I thought on like a play like this, Goff did make some good decisions. Again, he didn't have a lot to do, but like wonder where it was opportunities for him to do something. He was able to be at least solid at it. Uh, it's going to be man coverage, and the concept to his right is this pick play that can work very well against man coverage. It's third down and short right here. They have to get to the uh, the 27 yard line is where they need to be. So maybe third down and medium, right? You need about uh, six yards on this play, uh, and watch what happens. Right off the bat, Goff looks to his right, and that pick play just it was it didn't work. Uh, they did not do a great job. It almost looked like there was a miscommunication there, so not great. But Goff is going to do something he has struggled with his entire career. He gets to that next read and is going to make a throw that gives his receiver a chance to get the first down, right? And that's all you can ask for. Uh, so good play by Goff of, again, that's running the offense well. You can sit here and say, well, he's only throwing the ball three yards down the field. He needs to push the ball down the field more. Well, the offense isn't asking him to push the ball down the field more. So you kind of can't. And then there's also stuff like this where what's going to happen is that it's a zone coverage play. You have, uh, you know, it's, it's TJ Hawkinson running a route that's going to get into this gap and cover. Uh, over the middle, very similar to the interception I showed you earlier. Right when this play starts, you notice that. So for Hawkinson, uh, it's going to be a tough throw, right? I mean, this time, unlike last time where the tight end had to, or excuse me, where the linebacker had to completely turn his back, now he can sort of see the play so he can adjust to it. So this is a much more difficult throw than last time. And I said last time was probably his best throw. Uh, I take that back. This was his best throw. Look, Goff just makes a beautifully accurate throw. Anything, anywhere else, that's not a completion. That's a great play. So again, 
Goff's not a great quarterback. Goff is at his best when he's in a great situation where guys are getting schemed open and he can just run the offense. That's when Goff can be successful. This is the complete opposite of that situation for Goff. So yeah, he's going to look horrible. Like this. It's just a terrible fit. Granted, every quarterback is a terrible fit with bad receivers, but that's sort of besides the point. So yeah, that's kind of my frustration a little bit with, you know, Dan Campbell calling out Goff and Lions fans really calling out Goff. Listen, it's fine to call out Goff, but Goff is not the only issue here. That That's just my main point uh, in making this video. So uh, yeah, that's what I think at least. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.